now? What is on Sabrina's agenda? Huh? What is on Sabrina's agenda today? Some work you gotta get done. Well, I don't need coffee. Let's do something nice like this. Go get coffee and then walk up to the Java Giant. Get some kind of coffee. Yeah, I don't know. 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 Yeah, So yeah, you wanna go for a walk, huh? Yeah? You like a going for a walk. Oh yeah. Huh. Okay, so really I want something different. So how about what what day? Today is um today's Wednesday. Let's look at the juice calendar. An old master juice says Wednesdays in September, the King Kong of the day after, also this blue color. This has a Wednesday color on it. But this, uh, this doesn't feel good. This is dirty too. It's been hanging in the house. So. That's what Karen was wearing. Fall's coming. It will not be inappropriate to wear something around your neck. So anyway, ow! Come on. Peace sign.
It smells a little musty dusty. Alright. These are dirty, ready for the dirty clothes. That's ready for the dirty clothes. Dirty clothes, dirty clothes. Alright, something for the other music. something for you to wear, Sabrina. Here, look. Try this. Here, come here. It could go on your butt. Or, yeah, it could go on your butt. Like this. Let's see, just like that. Put one right there. Yeah. Put another leg in this one. Like that. This. And like that. And put your tail in there too. Your tail's got to go in. Okay, right? So you can go on. You can put your tail away. And then you can look like this, right? <laughs> and you got britches. <laughs> yeah, you got britches. Sabrina got britches. She wearing britches. She got a pair of britches on. Now let's see. Stand up and see what it looks like. Stand up and see what it looks like, Sabrina. No? You're embarrassed. She's embarrassed. She don't want to show the world. She don't want to show anybody what her britches look like. I need some britches or something. Something. A skirt. Yeah, I'm feeling a skirt. All these tops, nine million tops, and no skirts. Oh, and we got pants. We got pants. Got lots of pants. No skirts. So we got we got we got skirts too, but you know, it's like just not that many. No. Actually, you know this black one is nice. Remember this Sabrina. Yeah. 
Okay. So. Oh, there she is. Okay, she's on the couch now. Um, what happened to you? What's up for you? All ready to go, huh? Yeah, so we could go for a walk to go get coffee, right? This time you get to go coffee, getting with me. Yeah, oh. Okay, beans. Yeah, let's go. Come on, honey. Let's go get me some coffee. There you go. That's it. So. Well, so. You're allowed on the couch. You don't have to ask. Anyway, just things to do. So anyway. Oh, oh, 
Alright, All right, where was I? Smoking pot. That's right, getting ready to smoke some pot. <sighs> no, Master Jude said, find me something to use to make a slate out of. Need something to make the editing go better. Something to make the editing easier. Something, you know, and it seems like, well, you know, what? I don't know what. You know, the old Master Jude has all these demands, doesn't understand. Well, you know, doesn't understand. I'm just one body, you know, and yeah, okay. Well, so yeah, there's all these characters, all these people that are always hats on you. So, you know, these different hats. And it's a big one. What can you have? What can you have? Anyway, so we have all these, what are all these different hats, do all these different jobs, and and, 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 and make all these movies, do all the editing, do, you know, write all the songs, you know, uh, and create all the stories that we, we got this world tour, world peace thing he wants to do. This world tour, world peace thing is important. Just as important as the work that we've been doing for the Public Space Association, which is an old master genius idea too. So much work. Gosh, no idea signing on to this program. So much work. When Ron, Ron goes and decides to go away, Karen becomes a no, it's, it's the same body. Karen died. Ron went away. Ron's now a superficial character, too. So, anyway. Well, we were working over, we were talking about, we just had this discussion earlier in this other movie we were talking about. Don't you know the other movie we were making? And about this uh, acceleration rates and stuff, you know? Acceleration curves. It really is staggering when you think about it. We had this calculator out, figuring this out. And, and it is staggering. We think about gravity, gravity being 9.8066. Five meters per second, and then if it's pulling you in, see gravity like this, you've got one meter, and when it hits, if it falls one meter by the time it hits the ground, it's going 9.8 meters per second. Now, here's how this is, this is how they figured it out. One newton is the amount of force the amount of force that it takes to accelerate one kilogram to one meter per second. That's one newton. So, one newton is the force it takes to move Have I got that right? Is that like that backwards? Is that nine point? Is that one meter per second? 
and that equals 9.8 newtons. See, do we have that right? Oh, I don't know, I hadn't thought about that one. Is my relationship to that knowledge correct? See, you've got questions. If you're always thinking, you're always going to have questions. This is truly what it is to learn. And this is the thing I want to teach best as being a teacher of things in life. That we've always been a teacher. We've been a teacher, we didn't even know we were teaching. It took us a lot of years to realize we were a teacher. We teach now because we, because we just love sharing knowledge. So we teach what we know. We want to make sure, always make sure we're correct. We don't want to teach no incorrect information. Do we? Huh? No incorrect data. Got to make sure everything's correct. So before we go quoting any of that, we're going to double check that. Okay? We're going to look it all up. We're going to do some research on that one. But... Okay, so now, as far as that discussion goes, though, imagine, let's just imagine, let's look at the staggering numbers that you get. If, say, you accelerate from zero to 9.8 meters per second, and then you, each time a second goes by, it squares. So 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? And I think you get the right, the same number as well. Let's do that. If, 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 does that work? Yeah. If you go 9.8 meters per second squared, if you've got 10 seconds squared, the 9.8 would be would be 98 squared. Okay. So it'd be like if we got one, we would be 100 squared, be 1,000, right? Okay. Right. Okay. Now, so. Is that the same result as a scoop? Let's just call it one. A okay, one, ten. So you square one. If you square one, you get one. That's an incorrect value for a log. Your correct step up is ten. But one, ten, one hundred. One, ten, one hundred, thousand. Right? So one squared is ten. Ten squared is a hundred. Hundred squared is a thousand. Thousand squared is a million. Thousand, yeah, because it's one with. with Six zeros. That's me. So one ten hundred ten thousand. By the time you get to six seconds, you're a million. Okay. If you were to take one meter per second squared per second, every second, you square it every second. Right. So. That's seven. In seven seconds, you have a million meters per second. Yeah. So if you were to take six and a half a million, you come out to a million in seven seconds. So if you were to take seven squared, right? seven seconds squared. Seven squared. See that doesn't work. My brain is not working today. Is it? Is my brain working? No, that part. So, no, that's correct. Okay. So you go one ten hundred thousand ten thousand million. Okay. And then a million squared is. I think it's hundred million. A billion. So yeah, because it's like you take a million, you take six zeros, you take and you put on twelve zeros. So twelve zeros would be yeah, hundreds, thousands, or hundreds, yeah, it'd be hundreds, thousands, millions, billions. Yeah. And that's twelve, so you're talking about a billion. A million squared is a billion. 
So hypothetically, if you were to take and go and be able to accelerate at one meter per second, from zero to one meter per second, and then every second you square that that velocity. So in one meter per second, you're at one meter per second. In two seconds, you're at 100 meters per second. In three seconds, you're at, at see, this is a compounded acceleration. So in three seconds, you're at the next number up. So you're at one, 10 meters per second, two seconds, one meter per second, 10 meters per second, 100 meters per second, 10,000 meters per second, a million meters per second. No, right, yeah, see, it'd be one, no, see, it'd be, yeah, one, one, ten, ten turns, ten squared is a hundred, you've got a one and two zeros, that's a hundred, okay, one hundred squares becomes one with four zeros, that is ten thousand, okay, ten thousand then again squared becomes a one with eight zeros, yeah, see, it wasn't a thousand, ten thousand, so one with eight zeros, See, I've got to correct myself. They're thinking back to myself. I've got to make sure I'm correct. Okay? Everybody's, everybody who swears that they are professed to know something, they better really know it and better convey correct information. If they do get, if they do get, get caught or catch themselves conveying incorrect information, they better be prepared to fix it. I, I look and review everything I ever do to make sure that it's correct. Everything I ever say something having to do with information components of something. So anyway one ten one hundred ten thousand now we're up to ten thousand and we got ten thousand is eight zeros. So eight zeros would be three six nine Nine, nine, once you get past nine, you're in a billion. So it's ten billion because you need eight. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, we're right. Eight zeros would be a one hundred thousand, one hundred million. Yeah, three, six, nine, three, com, three zeros, comma, so the one takes the place of the nine and makes it one hundred, one hundred million. Okay, square that again. So, See where we're at, and if we could accelerate, if we could accelerate only just at one meter per second, which only requires one uh, one newton per kilogram. Okay, I'm gonna get the one. What is it? Watts. How many? How many watts is that? So I've got it written down on the other notebook, on the yellow page of the other notebook. I write these notes. Okay, what was it here? A oh, one newton is the force required to accelerate one kilogram of mass to one meter per second squared. Okay, so it only takes one newton per kilogram. So it takes a hundred newtons for a hundred kilograms. Okay, a thousand newtons for a thousand kilograms. Okay, a million newtons for a million kilograms. There, see, it's that simple. Okay, now, you got that formula from Newton, Isaac Newton. That's one Newton, 9.8. And one Newton is 9.8. Oh, so that makes one Newton. It's 9.8. To be gone. All right. So now, <laughs> all right. So now, uh, yeah. So our, our uh, uh, just based upon that. So here, now I've got a graph. Yeah, we made a graph. But, uh, let's see. It's this simple. If you take, you can't accelerate at that rate. One meter per second squared. So in one meter. In, in one meter, you've gone one meter in one second. Okay. In two seconds, you've gone, you, you've gone 
one, one meter, one square in two seconds. It's not two meters, it's not ten meters. Because technically, that the true value of one square is ten. It's ten squared, it's a hundred. If you interrupt, if you do not do that, you interrupt the sequence of all If one square is only one, it will always ever be one. That's why physicists always go 10 to the negative power, or 10 to the power of, 10 to the power of something. Because if you take 1 to the power of something, you end up with 1. It always be a result of 1. This is a mathematical anomaly. So, past that now, mathematical anomaly, it goes 1, 10, 100. Okay? And at 100, then it goes to 10,000. Not to a thousand, it goes to ten thousand because the hundred squared is ten thousand. So let me write that down. I got a graph, I did it with 9.8 meters. 9.8 meters per second squared. <laughs> so in other words, that's even faster. That's if you're using. Okay, that's if you're using uh, anyway. We're above light speed in seven seconds. Yeah. But let's do this. Just one page. Oh yeah, here maybe this is a cool one. This is this is kind of a diagram representing all the all the coils necessary in each stage of, of if this is only represents four stages of the TAS um, vortex seal accelerator, the TAS unit. All right, so now one meter per second squared. One, ten, one hundred, ten thousand. Hundred thousand. We've got to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros. So it's more than a hundred thousand. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Common, common. Hundred million. Okay, you're at a hundred million meters per second. Okay. Y speed is 299 million meters per second. All right, so let's square that again. So we take a one, okay? How many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? Eight, okay? That's eight zeros. We need 16 zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16. Come, 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 come. One, two, three, four, five. Five decimal places. Got pretty accurate square each time. Everybody, you know this is correct. Everybody knows 10 times 10 is 100. So that proves that theory, right? We add zeros, just just take the number, add the zeros. So one, two zeros. So one, so one, ten, so one. Oh, here. So you can see it. I'll do it backwards in my hand. One, oh yeah, a one and a zero. Times a one and a zero. One times one is one. A zero, take the other zero. 100. 10 times 10 equals 100. 10 squared is 100. 1 squared, 1 times 1 equals 1. one that's, I mean, yeah, technically the mathematical anomaly ends up with the incorrect result because 1 times 1 will always be 1. Anything times 1 will be 1. On any number times 1, I mean, you know, so 150 times 1. There's only one group, is one. Okay? 
it has to be greater than one for anything ever to equate to more than one if you're doing multiplication or even division. One divided by one. There's only one group of one. There's only one there. One piece. There's only one. One cup. Divided by one cup. equals one cup. Okay. One cup times one cup. There's only one cup. If you take and go, okay, one, clone the cup. Okay, let's say that's the magic bell. Bing, 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 bing. Cup one, cup two. Now there's one plus two. And then there's two cups. If you were to go, okay, every time, every time, if you could copy the cup, every time you click the cup, every time you ding the cup, there's another copy. Okay, and you go, okay, one squared. Okay, you want to take one squared. Okay. To take one squared, it's going to take 10 dings. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10. Now you have 10 copies. That is one squared. Got it? Did you understand that? Can you wrap your head around that? This is real time, real time math. This is really the real world. This is must be done in order to make a logarithm work. So anyway, here it is. First second, one, one meter per second, second, ten meters per second, third second, third second, three seconds in, we're at 100 meters per second, four seconds in, 10,000 meters per second, five seconds in, we're at 100,000 meters per second, okay, six seconds in, we are above light speed by, here, let's take and subtract it, let's do it by hand, Okay, write it in, 299, this is going to be a minus sign, 299, 792, okay, 4, eight, three. okay, Johnny times light, times 10 times light speed, put a zero on the end, 299, call me at 299, this is a super easy wagon, 299, 792, Four eight three zero. We talk about last speed, ten times last speed, all you want. We've been there already. We've been there already and back again. Time dilation as you go up and reach light speed, and then after you reach light speed, you go back in time. If you're traveling somewhere, you can travel at one meter per second and have have the exposed to one gravity. Okay. You're at 9.8, you're at 1 Newton, okay, traveling, accelerating at 1 meter per second, with 1 gravity. Okay, so as you keep good accelerating, moving faster and faster and faster and faster to light speed, you get, as you exceed light speed, you start going back in time. Okay, you can, and then as you slow back down, Time starts to hit the light speed threshold again. You start going forward in time again. So you can travel from here, okay, to a distance where you know you're going to get there in seven seconds. You can travel in seven seconds to near light speed, then to decelerate. Or you'd have to travel above light speed for a little bit. So you'd have to go further than you need to go to get above light speed and then backtrack again to get back to current time. <laughs> I know it's tricky, but you know, what can you say? This is how it works, okay? But the above light speed equation works this way. Where, where, where you have, they used to think a train could only go faster than 200, than, than, than 60 miles an hour. Right. Now then when they then they reached uh, uh, 200 miles an hour, they used to be that, that's as fast as you could go. But when they finally reached sound, the speed of sound, 1,000 meters per second, they thought that was as fast as you could go. 
Oh, tell, I mean, oh, before they have reached the speed of sound, it's like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, you go faster than the speed of sound. You can actually punch through the barrier where the where the wave front of something that's being generated and the, when the Doppler shift occurs and the fre apparent frequency reaches a point where that frequency is a, a null and you have a pressure zone. At that pressure zone, you can break through that pressure zone and get through it, and that pressure zone is left behind you, where then the Doppler shift decreases the frequency to anybody that's behind you, accordingly to how much faster you're going, you know, and accordingly to who's actually now in front of the wave, in front of the wave front. Okay, so that's, we're going to get into a bunch, of, a bunch of physics there describing that. But the essentially... Um, um, essentially, uh, you know, it's the same way with a boat in the water or a submarine bullet. You fire a bullet into the water. A bullet can go faster than the, if it's an ultrasonic bullet, or you can actually fire a bullet faster than how fast speed sound travels through water. And it'll still go faster and it'll cavitate through as it goes faster. The cavity will fall in behind it as it cavitates. You can even, you know, if, you know if it's shot out. Even without, even without something that's uh, you know produces a gas as a projectile, it's fired with a spring underwater. You just use a spring that's strong enough to send a projectile up above the speed of sound in water. It will cavitate in the water and create a vacuum space until it slows down and, and through a period of time where that vacuum space will fill in behind it. Okay, and the same holds true then for also the speed of light. The light that's produced, that you're producing, that comes off of you, it would create a wave front in front of you. Okay? That wave front, okay, well, the whole, one of the whole keys is to not be producing light. Or being to produce a, a frequency of light which is negative that of the common frequency thereof of the, uh, of the, uh, of the ambient, the ambient light that's in the universe is the background, background radiation, which is whatever. It's really cold, but it's a little bit of heat. You know, what was it? Gosh, I don't remember, I remember it was 0 or something. Calvin. Anyway, so let's do our subtraction here by hand. Let's do this. Okay. 0 minus 3 is equivalent to 10 minus 3, which is, which is 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, now we've borrowed one from that zero, that made that a nine, let's convert that to nine. A nine minus eight is one. Okay, now we're into the next number. Now we've got four, zero minus four done, so we're going to borrow one from here, makes that a nine. Okay, makes this a ten, this ten becomes, okay, four minus, ten minus four is six. Okay, now we have nine minus two is next in line. Nine minus two is... Seven. Okay. All right. Now, come over to the next one. All right. Come over here. Nine minus zero can't do that, so we make that a ten. That makes this one a nine. Okay. Now, ten minus nine is one. Now over here we got nine minus seven, which is two. Okay. Now we come over here. We got we got oh um, zero minus one can't do that. We make that a ten. This makes this one a nine. Okay. Zero minus Zero minus one. Okay. Oh yeah, ten minus one is nine. Okay. Alright, now we come over here. Nine minus nine is zero. Okay, and then we go over here. I messed up right here down here. Let's see this. Six, 
seven. Nine three ten is one. Seven three nine is two. Seven comma seven one six. It's a difference of seven. This is how much more faster the light speed you're going in six seconds. If you square it each time, each second, you know, and do this uh, um, compound curve, the exponential curve, you end up at seven hundred and eleven million. 217,117 meters per second faster than the speed of light. Okay, so here's what could happen. Here's what happens. So it takes you six seconds to travel. Say if you can trip, say hypothetically, you do not have a limit to how fast, you, how, how long you can accelerate. So you can keep that up. You can get up that up for an hour or two so in an hour or two you're at seriously hot seriously serious magnitudes above the speed of light because here at if you just square it again each time you can do it to keep your gravity up okay for your period of time so you can stay in one gravity if you accelerate that way your floor's here that way so your saucer right so we were designing our, our multi, our, 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 after the space fiber, we have the next one coming, which is going to use multiple tabs units around it. And we'll use, probably we'll put a, for our, um, uh, probably a Wind, Windhurst machine right in the center. Okay, for gyroscopic stability, put that kind of gamble, gimbal, whatever, to work with the thruster. Okay, and the, and the Windhurst machine would produce high voltage electricity which gets modulated to a frequency and sent to the outside and polarized and modulated so that it becomes something that works in anaphasically to the background radiation so that it basically creates a dark spot against the background radiation lets you go past it so on the threshold of well actually you have the threshold of light coming off of you know, is being reflected from you from background radiation, which, be the, which would considerably consider to be to the limit because of the thermal uh, uh, heat produced stuff from the friction. Okay? And you're getting all those things about work it out with thermodynamics about the speed of light thing. But nothing says you can't generate a field around you that is anaphasic to that field. So basically, you're canceling out that field. So when you're canceling the field out, you're basically null and null zone to it. So once you get to do that, it'd be easier to break if you're not reflecting any light off of you. So you have no, you're not producing any light, you're not producing any wave from it. So it's hard to, it's hard to explain really what I'm trying to express. But, um, so, so let's say I think you're going somewhere, um, um, you've got to calculate your starting point if you knew you were going to go at uh, such a distance and you want to arrive there back at now. The now, for, the now for here, which is the now for there, okay? You have to calculate your speed. So your time, what you do is calculate your acceleration to give you light speed and a distance of, uh, above light speed and then amount of the acceleration 
a travel above light speed and then and then it'd be acceleration from above light speed then to light speed back through down to zero and to your destination you follow what i'm saying so if your destination was from here to alpha Centauri, how many light years is it i don't know I can't think of it off the top of my head we don't store data like that we we actually have a hard time memorizing anything anymore. Even mathematical symbols, formulas, whatever, it's gone. If I need to use it, I have to go study it to use it every time. But I have to work it out every time and relearn it. It sucks being me. But the advantage is, is since I've been through it so much through my life, been through it over and over and over, different stuff, you know, doing different stuff and conversations that we've had with people. It comes back easy. But so here's how this works. You go from say you have a distance say it's ten light years. So you know in near in ten years in ten years it's at light speed, it's 10 years. At two, if you could accelerate instantly, okay, or say you accelerate to light speed in one first year, you travel at light speed, continuing there, in 10 years you'll get there. Okay. If you deaccelerate, then finally you to step nine. It takes you a year to get to light speed. You got eight years to travel at light speed, one year to deaccelerate, so it's 10 years to get to years of light speed. Because the acceleration, Deacceleration, deaccelerate, decelerate, and deaccelerate. So you calculate this way. So you need a period of time above light speed to compensate for the period of time for the time dilation that you're that you're experiencing while you're getting to light speed. So if you can get to light speed, you know you can get to light speed within less than six seconds. So at five point some odd seconds, and five point Without doing the math in my head, I'm just going to take an educated guess. It's going to point to be 0.3 something, 0.25 to 0.3 something seconds. Five point some odd seconds, you're at light speed. Then so many more seconds you travel, you know, and you're going to travel at light speed so long, and you go so many, a nanosecond or two at light speed, then start to accelerate, and then you're back to When you get there, you're back at now. You've experienced reverse time dilation at light speed. You're going to accelerate and you're deaccelerating, and you come back into light speed again. You're going to get to and you're going to experience a time dilation here again while you're deaccelerating. So you have to account for that too. However, here's the advantage, here's the thing it's the same equation acceleration versus deacceleration. They're equal if you decelerate at the same rate of deacceleration as you accelerate, then the dilation you experience at this from zero to full acceleration, from zero to light speed or above light speed. And you gotta go above light speed for a period of time to compensate for both. For because it is equation of the light speed for, for one for the period of so if you're taking, if it's taking you 0.25 seconds to get to light speed, it's going to take you 0.25 seconds to deaccelerate from light speed, and you then you need light, above light speed travel at at point at at uh, uh, for you need to get to uh, a point five seconds to get to above light speed for a period of uh, I'll say hypothetically just an educated guess without punching in all the numbers in a calculator for the next five years. You need <laughs> but this is the complicated equation. Um, uh, um, but uh, just doing it in my head uh, estimating you need to travel above light speed and keep accelerating or or reach a steady acceleration or steady, steady velocity in above light speed, say, and at, at 0.5 seconds for a period of, say, steady at light, uh, say, that'll put you at two times light speed or so, three times light speed, say, travel three times light speed for a period of 
two seconds and then the accelerate start new deceleration to two point. And then we're there in about twelve seconds. Seconds to deaccelerate from the uh, life speed point. 5.25 plus 5.5 is 10.5 seconds for acceleration and deacceleration. So you have to compensate for time dilation for a period of time of 5.25 uh, uh, five uh, uh, five seconds of time dilation. That's uh, progressively increasing as we increase to life speed. See, it's complicated. It gets deep, very, very complicated math. But once you master this math, you don't have to master this math in order to go see your friends in the office of Tari in the, in the space fiber. The space fiber will have about three hours of life support. We could put a scrubber in it. We could add a scrubber. We're going to use oxygen. Okay, uh, we're going to use air can, compressed air. Just plain compressed air that goes cycles through a cleaner. And can have a scrubber, so and then vents to the outside from a bottle. You collect it here on Earth when you leave. You need more, and you come back to the atmosphere. I, I really like the idea of just an atmospheric scrubber. You know, but, I mean, you collect it in your space station, you take it back your atmosphere, back to your space station, back to your space habitat, the International Space Station. You go visit there. But here's the advent of the space fiber. It's going to make intergalactic travel as common as driving. Because it will be capable. The, the, well, I don't know. The seat that's at this, I don't know. The space fiber will park inside the disk. The big disk, which is intended for, intended for intergalactic travel. And the, the, they're not going to mind that the, uh, uh, the ETs, whatever their names are, And their symbols, oh my god, you wouldn't believe their symbols. Anyway, the ETs want us to reach, they really would love us to get to a class one society before we ever get to a type one society. A class one society means we're not having war between each other, we're not stabbing each other, we're not shooting each other with guns. Class one society means means that the only purpose for guns is on a target range or for doing experiments like above sound speed of sound experiments in water to learn about above life speed travel. Okay? Those are some of our experiments we'll be doing. Oh, I think they have we have shockwave. I think the slow-mo guys, if we look, we need to go look at some of the slow-mo guy stuff. And if not, we're going to suggest it in collaboration. And we'll want to put make the music. Okay? <laughs> right? And old Master Duke says, Ronnie. 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 What, an old Master Duke? Lick the music. Lick the music. Okay, we'll make the music. Yeah? He wants us to make the music key. Yeah, an old master juice, I think, is key. You know, you're really androgynous, aren't you? Asexual, because an old master juice is like a spiritual entity. Okay? And so that's what an old master juice motivated us to, to create the Public Space Association. Because of what we've studied through life, what we've thought about, and our curiosities about, you know, Roswell and then Actually, Roswell, the, the Gray, the Grays came to us, and we can't pronounce their name, whatever they call themselves. The Finn Block Club, one of the gods, people. Okay. The tiny little gray feminine, the gray aliens. Who we love dearly, said, we don't like the fact that you're reverse engineering our work, our craft, that you crashed landed at your Roswell. And they told me this. They told me this when they met me on the outside of the window. And they told me telepathically through the window before I got 
Deep conversation I was having with a friend of mine the day. Can't ask permission to divulge his name because I haven't seen him in a long time. But anyway, I really didn't want to wink at him. He went over there being a floor dog again. She's being a floor dog. So here's what they tell me. You guys, you humans, can reverse engineer it. You can learn about it. You can study it, but we want you to come, with, come up with your own version. And that we did. So we have it. We came up with it. We, we studied it as gradual disclosure, as information about it came out online. We studied it, we did it. What the? What you doing on the floor? Floor dog! She's a floor dog! Floor dog! No, she'd rather be. Papa! Sabrina! Sabrina! Oh, beans! It's a Sabrina and Rat Dog. A Rat Dog. Beans. Actually, it's just the cartoon. How to become Beans and Rat Dog. Beans and Rat Dog. Beans and Rat Dog. Yeah, the, the dog next door, the other one, Jean, whatever, whatever dog you need. Beans and brat dog. And you're getting that position so I get a nice picture. I'll take a still shot. Put your butt in the air because you don't care. Put your butt in the air, Beans. Put your butt up in the air. No, put your butt up in the air like you don't care. Do it. Do it. Get in the position. Get in your flying position where you use some bias, kinetic impulse, or force propulsion. Kinetic force. Oh, what was that formula again? The formula for kinetic force is actually a centrifugal force in your case because it's weakening back and forth. Like you can do it with the range. I'll do it again. I'll show you again. Let me show you all the time. With the range stick. The range stick. oscillating about 80 degrees, okay, 80 degrees there, okay, and the bottom is going to be oscillating here, and they're going to be in phase, like this, so it'll be like the dual, Walter Lewin's dual oscillator problem, number 43, okay, like this, okay, now the stuff inside is going to be subject to centrifugal force A, Okay? And as it comes up into the other zone, which is going to have an arc from centrifugal force zone A to centrifugal force zone B, is first going to be subject to harmonic oscillation A. Okay? Then we'll be out of phase. Okay? You've got to be getting this right. All right. And this would be in phase. So we're going to do an in phase. Okay? We're going to do an in phase. You can hear it jagging a little bit. Now we're going to increase the velocity. We're going to increase the frequency. Which also may increase the full harmonic velocity. Okay. We're going to do it at a point where it's actually outside of it. 
outside of the harmonic, natural harmonic frequency. And then what we're going to watch now. And right here, right, that's what we did. Okay, guess what we did? You didn't even, you can't even tell when you're doing this. All right, but watch when I stop. Watch when I listen to what happens. Listen. We get rain. Yeah. Okay, so now, if you were to build something strong enough to take the place of my wrist, okay, to do this, okay, fast enough, okay, like, like that, which would be outside of its natural harmonic frequency, okay, it would still produce bias centrifugal force. It produces the beads go up here until it reaches the centripetal zone here. They climb. Okay? And there they are. I'm going to go really high frequency. I just like that. They're still up there. Okay. Drop the mic. Demonstration done. All right. So, guess what? We have a device we've invented. See, if you do that enough, okay? okay people have been trying this. You see these online. You see, and you see them all over. And when you go into incorrect terminology for it, inertial propulsion, you find these things, too, that do this. And you see them in these big, funky things, and they blah, 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 blah. Everything you see online is... Oh, if they call it inertial propulsion, it's probably named correctly because it don't do much like an inert gas. Okay. I hate being so blunt, but it's true. Blunt but true. Do 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 do. Okay. However, however, we know physics that we know that. Guess what you can do? All right. And then, you know, nobody's going to steal this one now either because this is part of, this is, we're putting this out here. Oh, space association stuff. Okay, space stuff. Okay. And so we're going to make sure this video is a life cycle. This movie is this this also going to get clicked. It's going to be in the, in the playlist for space stuff. Okay, so. So, yeah, wagging her tail, because she knows it's right, it's true. So, here's what we do. We invent this thing. We haven't built it yet. But, it involves the use of a piezo crystal. Okay? There's, we'll use our, I'll use my palette knife as an example. So, it uses a piezo crystal that does this. When you put electricity to it, put an AC electricity to it, it does this. Now, like a piezo tweeter, it will oscillate at whatever frequency you give it. It will oscillate at frequency outside of its own mind, like speakers do. A loudspeaker does. That's why it works like a loudspeaker. They will have peak frequencies where the harmonic frequencies are. However, they still oscillate and move air outside of their harmonic frequency. The points of their motion, when it's happening, their internal harmonics might be now, there will be points where they're in the her internally the harmonic harmonic frequencies end up out of phase. However, the sum the net frequency comes out to whatever frequency it's being driven at. And same thing with the piezo crystal, and like that. So you can do it this way, or like that, or faster, or faster. So now, once you give the decide on the frequency, which you can oscillate it at its harmonic frequency, if you want, or multitudes above it, okay, above the harmonic frequency, it's just like the same thing about this life speed thing, see, right? So, the same thing about the life speed, oscillating something above its harmonic frequency 
is like going faster than the speed of sound, or faster than the speed of light. So, at the end of this thing, at the end of the spring, So anyway,
front by where you pipe your lung forward and back from the end of the stem. The balance of the feet floats and and you give it underneath. There's good rest here underneath here would be the, the point, the bore, okay, where all the little bee jaws now. Okay. I mean a hundred thousand of them. Okay. A hundred thousand of them you guys. Okay, all from this big board. We all mount underneath here, and then they're giving you know, the batteries going underneath here, like this. And this is where the feet go, right here, right? And this I'm going to call it the flying carpet. And the flying carpet. And the feet go right here, the platform, the payload. And you put your feet standing in the middle. And then you stand with your payload, front and back, and whatever. And if you have a railing around it, you know, and it's your flying platform. And so, basically, you know, Paizo, you're going to have such a limit, you know, when you're doing the five ways so long. But as a tweeter, you know how long Paizo tweeters last? So you think in terms of that, this thing only has to vibrate as much as like a tweeter would vibrate. The spring's got to be the, the right tension. So basically, we get this, say, one, this one, you know, point one gram weight, okay, oscillating within a one centimeter, within a one centimeter uh, radius. And about of an effective, uh, of infective, effective centrifugal, um, uh, centrifugal, um, uh, uh, radian of, uh, of say, say, 80 degrees. You can think in terms of radians and degrees. You should be about 80 degrees here. You can do 90. 90 degrees still works as long as, here, if it's 90, as long as that's your center point. And your, and your zero velocity, zero velocity, your max velocity. Here. Okay? So this is basically um, anti-gravity. It's not anti-gravity. Anti-gravity is an incorrect term, too. So, anyway, um, uh, so, so, um, 100,000 of these, say, let's do this now. Let's say we got, let's say we got, um, a one, one-tenth of a gram, which is, um, Kilograms, but it's a point zero. Yeah, yeah one gram is one thousandth of a gram. Already. So this is that's one gram. A tenth of a gram. How many tenths of a gram? One thousandth of a gram. Okay, point zero zero one kilograms. Uh, say it's um, say it's transistor across the radius of uh, point um, say one centimeter, which is point one meters. Okay. So, and say it's doing it at how many times a second? You only have to calculate to the highest velocity if it's doing that that many times a second. So it's crossing this point that many times a second. Boom, and that's what that's being centrifugal force. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, so that times the velocity. Let's say we're putting 100,000 cycles, 1K, 100K into 100,000 cycles per second. Okay, that's that's transistor going across that point 100,000 times per second. So it's going. This as a velocity across its, across its, uh, across its linear, across its path. So now, so if that's one meter, it's 90, and say that's 90 degrees, okay, we're going to need to use pi. Okay. So, so one centimeter. So we can do the calculation of like the zone going all the way around the same circle like this. And so it's only going to be this. So it's technically doing this. So it is technically doing half of that circle. So it is, it is one half of the, uh, 
we find centrifugal force by finding, finding that the circuit is in the circle. So we take, we take, um, right? And we just use radius. So we find circumference, use the radius of that, then calculate the backwards to the radius, and use that radius. Because the formula for centrifugal force is mass times uh, velocity squared. I didn't have a one. So anyway, so <laughs> so I guess we could take we take and find say we got one centimeter. We take our, our one centimeter times the one centimeter radius times two, which is two centimeters times pi. So so two times pi, which is two pi. Six point two eight. That is correct. Three point one point one times two is six point two eight. It is circumference. So six point two eight. Okay. Centimeter, centimeters. So it would be one half of six point two eight. This. Boom. 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 Boom.
across a lens of the source. So yeah, it's a six point. It's actually traveling. It's traveling the speed of our square. I mean, pi times two. So that's three six three point one seven one point two, which is six point two eight. So it's six six point two eight meters. Oh, that's centimeters. Centimeters per second. You see, and being centimeters per second, you see that you would have to be the same. So a centimeter is one hundredth of a meter. So that means it is 0.628 meters per second. So when you do the math, you take you take a function of six cubic meters per second squared. Thank you.